What's going on, folks? Uh, today's episode number 142, 142. And, you know, I'm your host, Roger. I love talking about veganism and different angles, different perspective. And today I have a, a special, very endearing to my heart topic. I want to talk about the impact of veganism uh, from a world hunger perspective and food waste, actually, including how a plant-based um, diet or vegan lifestyle can help feed more people using fewer resources. I don't know if this is a topic that we um, talk a lot, but um, I'm shifting a little bit of work from, you know, animal welfare for a little bit from the health standpoint also, and I'm going to focus on a different aspect of the world hunger because I don't think this, this is being touched a lot. So I wanted to take advantage of the opportunity to talk to you guys about that. Uh, also, I want to say all you guys thank you all the time for all the multiple supports we get from our podcast. Uh, we it's 141 episode, so we're really grateful and proud of from for you guys and and for all the support and love that we get on a regular basis. Um, stay tuned for a lot of more really good interviews coming through and coming forward. Okay, so all right, let's go. So first, let me let me share some context about this topic, right? According to the recent report by the United Nations, approximately 850 million, 815 million people suffer from chronic undernourishment. At the same time, it's estimated that one third of all food produced globally is wasted. This is a staggering amount of food that could be used to feed others in need. So this is a very huge. Um, prolific number so <laughs> yeah so this is this is how I want to start this this podcast we give you guys some some facts so how does um, veganism play a role in this issue right um, it's well known that animal agriculture is a major contributor of the greenhouse gas emissions and deforestation in fact the United Nations has declared that a global shift toward a plant-based diet is necessary in order to combat climate changes so not only we see that the United Nations is vouching this concern that we begins been breeding bringing out for many years so it, it, it's not just you know before it used to be just vegans being radical or vegans being hippies or whatnot, however you want to call it. Now you got different institutions like the United Nation backing this information up, right? So this this is this is big times, guys. So that's the reason why I like to have this space where we can talk about all the different topic. Because at the beginning it was just strictly all you know, vegans are doing this because they you know want to push their agenda and all these different comments. But now we see how. You got the science behind the health benefit of a plant-based diet, and uh, the vegan diet, or well, plant-based diet, however you want to call it. You got the science behind that. Now you got different uh, organizations behind the benefit, not only from a health standpoint, but also from an ethical standpoint. And we're talking now from a climate change standpoint, from the, envir- the environment as well. So now you have different institu- institutions behind all this, which is great. So like this is this is what we need because it's not just going to be focused on all oh, vegans are the only ones doing this. Now you have a massive amount of institutions and organizations that are behind this and then it makes it more of a fundamental thing makes it more of an accurate thing and it also gives us a lot of you know, powers on the strength right so you got more people actually pushing uh pushing this cause which is you know just to reduce the consumption of animals in this world so they can live freely right additionally producing a plant-based food requires significantly less land water and other resources than produced animals based food we all know that this is because it takes around 20 times more land to produce a calorie of animal protein than it takes to produce a calorie of plant protein also animal agriculture is a leading cause of water pollution and deforestation which contribute to food insecurity and habits destruction so now uh, I know some of y'all might be saying, well, might be thinking, but what about all those people who rely on animal agriculture for their livelihood? Well, okay. Well, it's true that it's a shift toward a plant-based diet may have an impact on certain industries. 
But it's important to remember that if this shift will also create new opportunities in the plant based food industry. I've been talking about this for a while, guys, because always people say, well, you know, what about the former and what about, you know, all these different companies that produces all these different um, products that are animal based? I say, well, there's, there's a big demand for plant based um, products now. And then those same farmers can transition now to create all these different alternatives, which is less resources. Um, it's just a matter of, of changing their mindset and their technology a little bit, or basically just the way they do things, basically. So once they figure that out, they should be able to transition with no problem and still have a business, which is if want to be a lot more sustainable at, at the end of the day, because we see how this, this huge impact on plant-based product is growing now and it's, it's worldwide and then you want to be one of those business that is kind of like leading that or at least on top of that uh, you don't want to fall behind so and not just because it's a trend it's, it's actually it's happening like it's real it's a real deal it's a real thing so with that said you want to be that company that is actually moving towards that same to same that same goal so I spoke about this before many times about how I see companies doing the transition. And there's already a lot of institutions or a lot of companies or a lot of nonprofits at the same time which actually help farmers or help these different institutions to, to migrate, to transition to a plant-based options. I've seen in the UK, i even seen in the US as well too, that helps um, this, all these companies. So let's say you own um, a cattle rancher, right? Or you produce dairy, and, and, and um, you, you need a way to transition. They, they, they have these this companies come, they bring the technology, these organizations come, they bring the technology, they bring the knowledge, and they help you make that migration. They even, they even help you to gain customers and, and to actually reach to new customers. So it's, it's awesome. So there's a lot going on, and it is possible. So you're one of those businesses. You want to be able to get into it. You want to be able to be able to do that transition. And then, of course, make sure that you rely uh, on a trustee partner or a company that know what they're doing, that have the experience, and they can help you kind of lead you to that transition smoothly. Furthermore, sustainable plant-based agriculture can provide more jobs and income than animal culture. Also, shifting to a plant-based agriculture can improve the livelihood of smallholder farmers and rural communities and can contribute to achieving a sustainable development goals. One more thing. I would like to add is that not only does a plant-based diet have a positive impact on world hunger and food waste, it also has numerous health benefits. Tony has shown that a plant-based diet can lower the risk of chronic disease such as heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and certain type of cancer. Additionally, it has been shown that a plant-based diet can help with weight management and improve overall health. By choosing a plant-based diet, not only are we helping to feed more people and reduce the food waste, but we're also taking care of our own health. Another important point to mention is that a plant-based diet is accessible and affordable for many people around the world. Plant-based foods such as beans, lentils, and vegetables are often less expensive than animal-based food and are widely available in many parts of the world, even in development countries where hunger is prevalent. This means that a shift toward a plant-based diet can also help to address food insecurity in these areas. Like, for example, I just came from Cuba, right? And, um, and even if you think like a country like Cuba, which is, <laughs> we have a lot of the political things going on with them, I was still able to, um, when you, was still able to find some food. But what I mean with that is like the basic stuff, right? Like, you know, you can find rice, beans, um, you know, like lentils. I was able to find rice, lentil, um, or at least find a way to have those things prepared for me if I wasn't able to, like me, physically get them from the store. Because that's a different story, which I have, which I actually spoke about it in a different video. But the point is that even there, even with my with my constraints and limitations, I was able to use able to find those things like basic plant based food, you know, b greens, legumes, all these different things. Like if you want something more specific, more super, more um, specific or more, let's say, 
more fancy, then yeah, it might be a little bit more difficult speaking about the Cuba example. But what I'm saying is you stay to the basic, you will be able to find those things in these places. Even in the most difficult places, you will be able to find the basic stuff. So what can we do to make a difference? Like, what, that's the question, right? Because what's the whole point of me saying all this and then giving you guys, you know, all this talk, but there's no... There's no message behind it. There's no content or context behind it, right? So the, the important part here is how or what can we do? What, how can we make the difference? And one of the most important things that we can do as individuals is to switch a plant-based food whenever it's possible. So like, just go fully vegan, <laughs> just go fully plant-based. That's all the issue, right? Or at least you are helping or you're contributing right to the bigger cause so by you personally you as a person going plant-based and going fully vegan going fully plant-based you're automatically not helping to um, destroy the planet you know to get rid of more animal life so you're not you're doing your part right you're doing your part then we can think, think about some of the bigger ways that you can create a bigger impact but at least that's the that's the start that's that, that's where you want to start Start by you changing your habit, you changing your way, the way you eat, you changing your um, your mindset. Like let, let's start with you first, and then we can talk about you know changing the world and changing everybody else. But we have to start from from the basic ground, right? Like you don't you don't start you don't start walking first. You crawl before you walk. So for us to to do that crawling, basically, is by you doing those basic things, you doing the basic steps, right? Additionally, we can support organizations and initiatives that promote sustainable plant-based agriculture and work to reduce food waste. We can also advocate for policies that encourage sustainable agriculture and food system and support local farmers, markets, and community gardens. So it's always that, that's always very cool, very, very important that we support our local businesses, local farmers, Locals, um, local plant-based businesses, and especially the locals one because they rely so much on us, right? They rely so much on that business so they can maintain and be sustainable and, and, and do, do do the different changes, right? In conclusion, the impact of veganism on a world hunger and a food waste is clear. By shifting to a plant-based diet, we can not only help combat climate changes, but also ensure that more people have access to nutrition, food, while using fewer resources. Because that's the key, right? Like, how can you maximize what you have, right? right? It's like a return on your investment. How can you maximize what you have without having to use less resources but have the more, right? It sounds like a contradictory, but at the same time, it's, it's, that's just the way to go. Like, you know, if you have, how can I take this $100? And turn that 100 into a uh, thousand, uh, a million, and so on and so forth. Because how can you maximize the amount of the resources that you have? Talking about from a money standpoint, but you were talking about from a land or from all the resources standpoint here, right? A plant-based diet is most sustainable and ethical way to feed the growing population. To learn more about um, to learn more about this, I recommend checking out the following resources: the United Nations reports on the environmental impact on animal agriculture, and I'll leave the links, all of these links I'll leave them in the description of the video, the Plant-Based Food Association, and then the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, and World Hunger Relief, Inc. So I will leave all the resources. Finally, I would like to recommend some local organizations that work on promoting plant-based diet and sustainable agriculture, such as Vegan Society, Greenpeace, and here in Houston, we also had the Houston, um, the Houston Vegan Society of Peace, as a matter of fact, in your country, and encourage our listeners to get involved and make a difference in their own community. So in summary, a plant-based diet not only has a positive impact on the world hunger and food waste, but it also has numerous, numerous, numerous health benefits, and it's accessible and affordable for many people around the world. If you choose a plant-based diet, which is my, what's what I want you guys to do is to choose 
going plant-based and then go vegan at that point, we can make a big difference and take care of our own health and support sustainable agriculture and food system. Really, truly, guys, I appreciate you guys for listening. I just wanted to take a few minutes to kind of talk about this topic because I know it's not being seen or, or people don't talk about this too much or a lot. And I wanted to take the opportunity to 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 share some some knowledge with you guys, share some some of my experience, or share some of the things that I have that I have analyzed and learned within the past couple of, a couple of years, uh, filling this lifestyle. And yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thank you for guys for listening. And if you have any comments, any suggestions, any advice, anything, just let me know. Just drop it off. Comment on any of these platforms. You know, I, li- I listen, I listen, I watch, and I hear everything you guys are always saying. So I'm paying attention. So if you have anything, just let me know. And I will gladly and be happy to either speak about or at least find someone that knows more about it so they can provide some information or some knowledge of this particular topic. So I have for my next episode, I'm going to have a great interview uh, with Lita Durango. And I'm not going to give all this all the information because you have to stay tuned. But I'm going to have a great interview with V-Label, uh, an organization that who focus on giving and putting labels on products. And, and they, they actually have a target market of Latin America, which is great, but this organization is also in Europe. So we're gonna have, we had a great conversation, and I'm going to be uploading that the next week. But in the meantime, I'm going to leave you guys with this episode. And let me know what you guys think. And I'll guys, see you guys in the next one. Thank you. Love you guys. Gracias por escuchar Latino y Vegano. Un show donde se habla todo lo relacionado sobre el veganismo entre la comunidad latina. No olviden suscribirse a este podcast, seguirnos en Instagram, Facebook, YouTube y a visitarnos en latinoyvegano.com.